joining us today. We are at Northeast Georgia Medical Center at Gainesville Campus. We're about to hear some updates from our leadership team on coronavirus in Gainesville. Feel free to comment, ask questions, you or you can visit our website at so ghs.com. Washing yes, your hands a lot. At least they want to look good. Why don't we go ahead and get started if we can? All right. All right, if you're ready to go, we are too. I'm Michael Covert and I have the privilege of serving as the Chief Operating Officer for the Northeast Georgia Health System. And as you know, uh, we've been actively involved, much as the community, state, nationally. Uh, this is sort of an unprecedented time for us in dealing with the uh, COVID virus and how we're handling this pandemic issue. And we wanted to be able to share with you a little bit today about what we're doing in the uh, community. Um, as you know, we've had the uh, privilege of caring for several uh, patients. And um, part of what you see behind us is a way for us to be able to manage throughput in caring for people if we see more people in the future. Um, if you want to know more about it, I want you to go to nghs.com slash COVID-19. I'm supposed to say that so that all of you who are watching and listening to this um, can get uh, additional information from us in the uh, process. Um, I want to give a shout out to our staff. Uh, they have been tremendous in responding. As you would expect in your community, our people have really responded in working and in, in trying to manage this situation as we do every day. And where some people have that opportunity, we encourage them to be at home uh, and to stay away from this, our people have to be here, and they need to be here every day. And they've done a tremendous job uh, at this point in time uh, as we deal with this particular um, epidemic. I have the privilege of introducing several people to you. Let me just take you around uh, along the way. Dr. Antoine LaFleur, who is our Associate Medical Director for our Gainesville campus for the ED. Angela Gary, who is our Executive Director for our um, Emergency and Trauma Services here, Dr. Mohawk Devay, who will make a few comments to you about this particular tent and its use organizationally. Dr. Cliff Hastings, who's our Chief of Staff of the organization, he's going to talk to you a little bit about what our medical staff is doing in response to this particular situation. Uh, Matthew Crumpton, who is our Director for our various emergency and operations. Dr. Shrevan Ketheretti, who is our Director of Critical Care and is also uh, very much involved with um, infectious diseases, double boarded, uh, and really has been leading us in that charge. And as you all know, uh, Sean Couch. We are pleased to have the opportunity to visit with you, and we hope that you help us get the word out on ways we can do a better job of managing this uh, crisis as it exists. So I'd like to begin by introducing Dr. Hastings, who is our Chief of Staff. Thank you, Michael. Uh, as Chief of Staff, I just want to say how uh, tremendously impressed I am with the response of the medical staff itself. Uh, the way we normally do things has been disrupted by this. We are not doing elective surgeries now. So I found that the medical staff has been willing to step up and participate in this response in ways that many of us haven't necessarily done before. Uh, tremendous support, and I just want to recognize them for that as well as recognizing our advanced practitioners and nurses, the clinical care people, as well as the support teams as well. We've basically been getting offers of support and uh, willingness to help in ways that are not necessarily even traditional uh, from a physician standpoint. And so all of that has been greatly appreciated and uh, we are utilizing those uh, talents as, as necessary. Basically, uh, not only the medical staff, but our community itself. We've had tremendous input and support from the community, as well as our uh, the resources within the community, and uh, we'll continue to draw on those as well. The uh, bottom line is pretty much our strength will be shown ultimately in our ability to come together and manage and work through this crisis. Uh, I'm proud of what we've done so far, and I'm confident that they will continue to respond and continue to support this effort uh, across the entire medical community. Okay. Well, I 
Dr. Cathrady to come up and talk a little bit about what we're seeing in our community and in the nation. Uh, thank you, Michael. Uh, Shrub Cathrady, the medical director of critical care. Uh, I first want to say that this health system uh, has responded to this unprecedented pandemic in a way that uh, uh, I think very few systems around the world have, have responded to with the speed and efficiency and level of sophistication uh, uh, for our response and what we expect uh, we will be seeing. Um, I think it is uh, a representative of the health system's commitment uh, to making sure that uh, it is the, uh, uh, the, the support structure for this community. Uh, but as we are preparing uh, intensely, I think it's important, I think it's an imperative for the community to understand what we're actually dealing with. And there's a lot of sort of things going around trying to understand what coronavirus is, what a pandemic is, and is this going to really uh, be as bad as people say? And I just want to be very clear that yes, it is very serious. This is not just the health system responsibility that we take care of people that come in, because we will do that, and we will do a great job at that. But it's also a community responsibility to realize that this is biology. This is not something that we negotiate with. This is a responsibility that the only way to treat something like this is to cut the train of transmission. And that it is our community's responsibility to adhere to the guidelines set forth by the CDC. And in fact, quarantine, stay at home, and uh, adhere to strict hand washing. This is going to continue uh, to rise in terms of number of cases, but we will respond. And it is my hope that through this meeting that uh, the community will do its part. So uh, just so that you know that I'm not making it up, um, there's an example out there and that's Italy. Uh, if, you can, if you follow the news and you understand what has happened in Italy, their exponential growth was unprecedented. And even though they prepared, it quickly overwhelmed the healthcare system. Uh, the health services workers uh, standing in the front lines uh, have been infected, but they continue to do what was necessary. Uh, and though the healthcare system has been overwhelmed. And it is with that concern that we've acted with a level of urgency uh, and uh, a need uh, that you see here. And it's with this staff, this is a top level staff. And I've worked in a lot of places uh, in a lot of different uh, you know, states, and this is one of the best. So I really have to emphasize that, you know, you just have to realize that what is actually happening around the world is definitely possible. So, thank you. All right, next we'll welcome uh, Dr. Bohawk Deve. He's our Chief of Emergency Medicine here at NGMC. They'll tell us a little bit about the mobile unit we see here. Uh, we're also standing up a similar unit at NGMC Brazelton, our hospital just south of here. They'll tell us a little bit about what the, the intention of these tents are, how we plan to use them, uh, and I'll turn it over to him now. Thank you, good afternoon, and thank you uh, for coming here uh, to hear about what we're doing at Northeast Georgia Health System. Before we take a moment and focus on what's behind us and what we're doing here, I wanna take a moment and recognize what's happening behind us uh, which is the community. Uh, I want to recognize our first responders, our firefighters, EMS, police, our nurses and urgent cares and doctor's offices, uh, physicians and staff that are there. They're doing, they're fighting this fight with us as well. And it'd be remiss to talk about how we are prepared here when we are also having the same type of outreach and preparedness for those folks outside in the community. So we want to acknowledge and thank them. Uh, behind me, as you will see, is a mobile field hospital um, that we are in the process of testing and building for patient care uh, for basically to adapt to whatever circumstances we face in the future. In emergency medicine, our job is to be prepared. We can't predict the future, but we have to be prepared. And we have spent tireless hours, I wanna acknowledge Matthew Crumpton, our manager of emergency preparedness, and his team for leading a task force as it relates to COVID-19 to ensure that we as a community, not just here in the hospital, as a community are ready to face this challenge. And this tent that is being erected is gonna be part of the our response for emergency services at both the Gainesville and the Brazelton campuses 
to do our best to basically cohort patients that are presenting with respiratory type symptoms to avoid exposing other patients and staff in the hospital and in the community and also protecting our staff. Uh, we have, our plan is to go live with this unit tomorrow. It'll have 12 to 14 beds. Uh, it'll have negative pressure. Uh, that's important when we're talking about respiratory conditions. And higher acuity patients will still be triaged and cared for in the appropriate setting. So, you know, we want the public to be very, very aware that this is a space which is creating additional capacity. As we have seen in a pandemic situation, you need capacity and you have to be able to adapt to what the capacity needs are at the time. So our goal is to adapt. I don't want to come here and commit to what this tent will be because that may change over the weekend. But what it will be is another space where we can provide the best emergency care for patients, whether they have suspected COVID-19 whether they've cut their hand, whether they've fallen from a tree, whatever the illness is, we will be ready. And that's our job for you in the community. And we just wanna make that clear. And that could not happen without the work of all these folks that are behind me, outside here and in, inside our building. So um, that's all I wanted to say, thank you. So those, that's gonna conclude our comments for this portion of it. In a moment, I'll open it up to question and answer, uh, but really just wanna recap uh, the main messages that our leadership, uh, both operationally and clinically, uh, as well as members of, of our news media as well, continue to tell me. The biggest concern uh, is that perhaps the community is not taking some of this news very seriously or as seriously as they should, especially when it comes to terms of self-isolating, quarantining, social distancing, whatever you want to call it. Um, the two main messages we want to convey to this public are one, take those very seriously. That's the only way we're going to get ahead of the spread and help prevent the spread of this virus through our community, state, and nation. Uh, the second is the most popular question we're getting now and to my public relations uh, office staff and communication staff is, what do we need to do if we're sick? So there's some very simple steps we can outline for folks. The first is, again, practice that social distancing. Take that seriously. Isolate as much as you can. Number two is if you start to develop symptoms, any symptoms, but mostly amongst those, fever over 100, persistent cough, upper respiratory issues, monitor those symptoms at home. I know that sounds a little bit different than what you might often hear from healthcare workers, but this is a different situation. Stay home, monitor those symptoms until it truly gets to a point where you believe that you need to seek medical treatment. When that time comes, call before you go anywhere. Call your doctor's office. If you do not have a doctor, call urgent care. Look online for a doctor's office. They will give you advice based on your symptoms of where you should go to seek treatment. Once you arrive for treatment, they'll do a better assessment there. Then they'll also be able to coordinate any testing if needed. Um, we get many people coming in the facility asking, can I be tested? We are performing tests. However, based on the national shortage, we have to be very judicious about how we use those and prioritize accordingly by different groups. So again, just want to reinforce those messages and at this point, We'll open it up for a few moments of question and answer before we need to let these important folks get back to the work at hand. All right, so the question uh, for those at home as well is, what's the capacity for treating patients? So just to confirm before I turn it over, uh, do you mean just for a mobile unit or overall? Okay. And also So hi, for those of you um, that don't know me, my name is Angela Gary. I'm the Executive Director of Trauma and Emergency Services. So currently right now we have 84 beds inside of our emergency departments, but we also have about 15 hallway spaces as well. Um, this individual unit uh, will have 13, 13 spaces for us to be able to treat patients. At the Brazelton campus, we have 21 beds, but we also have an additional 10 to 12 hallway spaces, and they will also have 13 spaces to be able to treat in their mobile tent. Where did these come from? Have you had them for a while, or is this something you just got in? So the question is, uh, where did we receive the mobile unit that we had them previously and where did they, what time did they come in? Uh, I'll turn that question over to Matthew Crompton, our manager of emergency preparedness. You had to walk away to get it. Never mind. No, I won't. I'll answer for him. Just kidding. Um, according to what Matthew's told me, uh, we received these from the Georgia Department of Public Health. Um, they've actually loaned those out to a few other healthcare systems as well. Um, we started operationalizing these on Monday. Um, and again, as Dr. DeVay mentioned, hope to have them operational uh, tomorrow. That's what our teams and staff are working towards now. Um, we already got IT uh, infrastructure that's moved in. Um, 
we're moving in equipment. We already have beds in, in, in there as well. Um, and now it's a matter of just stabilizing climate control, negative pressure, things of that nature. Have you ever had to use anything like this previously? That's a great question. Have we ever had to use anything like this previously? Not, not to our knowledge. And again, also want to reiterate, even though what we're seeing behind us is the mobile unit here at our hospital in Gainesville, we are also operationalizing one at NGMC Brazelton, our hospital to the south. Um, the, the purpose of that is the same, very similar look as well. We start Friday. That's our goal, yes, to operationalize by Friday. Yes. How does the staff stay, stay safe? So the, the question is, how does our staff stay safe? I'll turn it to our, our panel of experts here. That's an excellent question. Um, you know, growing up as an EMT, the very first thing we were trained is, is the scene safe? So before you can go take care of a patient, are you yourself safe? Is the scene safe? Staff safety is paramount. That's our job is to ensure that our people on the front lines have the appropriate equipment and training. So we do a daily analysis of our supply of uh, personal protective equipment and PPE, and we ensure that we are complying with the established guidelines, not just by the CDC, but by our infection control uh, and, uh, guidance and our um, head of infectious disease, which is Dr. Menopoli. So we, we, are, we are monitoring our supplies daily. Uh, we're training our staff so they know what conditions warrant what level of uh, protective gear, and that's how we're training our staff. Speaking of supplies, we're hearing various reports across the region. How are you guys on supplies? Like any other healthcare system right now, we, we have to be very vigilant in how we're using our resources. Um, this is unprecedented times, as you've heard. Um, we have, you know, we are fortunate that we've been declared, uh, we, have, we have consideration within our district for prioritization of supplies. Uh, so we are, as of right now, watching very carefully our, our, uh, our, our level of N95 masks, gowns, goggles, face shields, et cetera. Uh, you know, we, we are supplied right now adequately for the next several days. Um, but we, our, our goal more than anything is to make sure that our staff is safe. And if there are shortages that we anticipate, we're being very proactive, reaching out to local employers, not, not just the standard channels, but also our other members in the community that, that may have access to that type of equipment. I believe the latest public health has seven cases in the hall. I think I may be off. Is that right? How's the flow of patients been here? How's it impacted your operation? So, so the question is, how, do, how many cases in Hall County? I, I believe I'm aware of five confirmed positive. Uh, but uh, how has that affected our flow? Like most healthcare systems right now, we are facing a patient population that is worried. They're not always sick, but they're worried. And that's our job is to ensure, you know, we have to treat their worry as well as their, their medical illness. So we are seeing a lot of patients that quite candidly we would rather, it's safer for them and their family and the community to be at home. We are also seeing patients that are very, very ill with this illness. And are obviously, as with anything in triage, we have to devote our resources to the highest acuity patients. So we currently have been able to manage the volume of patients. If this continues in the rate of growth that we've seen in other first world nations, then we will, as a system, not just here, but across the region and across the country, will have much higher volumes, which is why we're being proactive and having additional capacity built. Are y'all considering units in other locations like Arrow or some of the other campuses? The question is, are we considering alternate uh, locations? Absolutely. What is the test process? Is it like a blood test? So the, the question is, what is the testing process? So the testing process is, is, a, is a nasal swab um, that we're detecting. There's also, uh, and, and again, the testing is not reserve we're not testing every single but we don't have the resources to test nor is it recommended that we test every single patient that is concerned about if they're exposed if they are if they have COVID-19 um, but there's also clinical signs and symptoms as well as other tests other than the actual COVID-19 test but other blood tests x-ray findings etc that we are using given our limited resource and availability of that test and when that test even in, our, in a best situation, we're not finding out results until 24 to 72 hours later. Just want to thank everybody again for coming out, uh, especially those folks who are watching at home, uh, streaming live on Facebook. I uh, appreciate again the, the efforts of our media, uh, both locally and across our state and nation to try to cut through some of the clutter that we see in today's digital world. 
to make sure that folks are getting the right information. Uh, and again, just to echo the comments of our clinical experts behind me, especially those of Dr. Ketheretti, um, one of the biggest messages we need to make sure the community really feels and understands is this is our window of time. We have an opportunity here to collectively come together as a community, as a state, and as a nation uh, to really follow these directions uh, for care and social isolation. Sorry, we'll try again. Isolation. And if we can achieve that together, we can help prevent the spread and hopefully prevent us moving to a, a case where our health systems are overwhelmed. If we move to that point, unfortunately, our caregivers are going to be faced uh, with making some very difficult decisions about who receives care. And none of us want to get to that point. So please stay at home, isolate, call your doctor if you have symptoms. If you have any other broad questions, again, you can visit our website at nghs.com. That's nghs.com. You'll see a banner at the top uh, for coronavirus and COVID-19. Click there. We've got information about visitor guidelines at our facilities, information about screening, and answers to some frequently asked questions. So at this point, uh, we'll conclude the uh, press conference portion of it. Members of the media, if you want to join us over here to the left, we'll give you a look inside our mobile tent so you can share those with your audiences as well. Thanks again. Again, thank you for joining us today. Um, and keep going to our website, ngh.com, for any updates. Sure, sure.